What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2024 Ford Expedition Limited Stealth. Huge thank you to Matt Newman over at Coon Sterling Ford here in Sterling, Virginia for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular Expedition or any Ford product, I'll be sure to have Matt's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. It is an absolutely beautiful day outside here today. It's literally the perfect temperature. A little bit of a breeze. We got blue skies with a couple clouds here in there, which is why I'm doing a couple review videos here today. But like usual, first I'm going to talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2024 Ford Expedition Limited Stealth. And this particular one has been painted in dark matter metallic. A couple things that I wanted to preface this video with that pertain to this particular expedition is that for 2024, you now get two front tow hooks when you opt for four wheel drive and the heavy duty tow package. And then you also get USB-C ports now in the second row as compared to the USB-A ports of the 2023 and below model years. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the headlights, then I'm gonna work my way down and around into the back end of the Expedition Limited Stealth. So as standard with the Limited Stealth, you get LED reflector headlights with automatic high beams as well as LED daytime running lights, LED turn signals, and LED fog lights. As some of you may be able to tell, this particular one has been optioned with the $4,670 Stealth package. And with that Stealth package optioned, at least up here at the front end, you get a black headlight bezel. You also get a black fog light bezel as well down here. So you can see headlight bezel is black and then the fog light bezel down here is basically just like a black trim piece that surrounds your fog lights. Again, with that Stealth package, you also get this black Expedition lettering at the center of your hood. Hood. Then you also get a black twin spar front grill. You get a black Ford logo and you get a forward facing camera that works with your 360 degree view camera system. Again, everything that I just mentioned and everything that you can read on screen right now come a part of the stealth package. So uh, coming down just a little bit more, I do want to reiterate a couple of things. So again, with that stealth package, you get a 360 degree view camera system. You also get this black grill, black lettering, uh, and pretty much all the blacked out elements that you can can think of come a part of the stealth package whereas otherwise they would have been chrome or like a satin chrome or silver type of color but coming down just a little bit more you get a mix of satin black and gloss black trim down here so at the top some satin black down here you get that gloss black and again with the heavy duty trailer tow package and the uh, four wheel drive or four wheel drive optioned you get these two integrated front tow hooks they are painted in black there's a view of that one there is a view of that one as well you also get four integrated parking sensors as standard with the limited and then last but not least you get 9.8 inches of ground clearance so this thing is plenty capable for the snow for some off Roading. However, with the stealth package, I would say this is more of like an on-road oriented expedition. You could take it on some gravel roads, maybe some mud here and there, but if you're really looking for like an off-road version of the expedition, you might want to look into the Timberline uh, because that kind of directly competes with like the uh, Tahoe Z71 or the Yukon AT4. Again, those are more of like the off-roady versions of these three-row SUVs. One thing I also wanted to mention is that as standard with the Stealth, you get a sport tuned suspension. However, this particular one has been optioned with the $1,495 continuously controlled dampening uh, with road preview. So basically, the vehicle is going to read the road in front of you and if it senses a pothole in front of you it's basically going to loosen up the suspension and it's going to ride over bumps uh, just a little bit better because it's prepared for them rather than reacting to them if that makes sense so um i noticed that when i first got out on the road like after driving this thing for five minutes i hit a bump and i was like whoa that handled that bump just a little bit too well because I've done a video with one of these before without that uh, dampened suspension. And I was like, there's definitely some sort of magna ride or dampened suspension system going on with this. And as soon as I checked the window sticker, it did have that. So um, if you're a car person or if you can kind of tell what the suspension is doing from driving a vehicle, you will be able to tell that this has that uh, upgraded suspension because it rides that much better and there's less body roll. It goes around turns better because if you know like Expedition, 
conditions and stuff, you know that they're kind of more oriented for comfort rather than sporty driving. Even with the Stealth uh, Sport Tune suspension, there's still a little bit of body roll and with the continuously controlled damping, uh, it really does make a massive difference with the handling and just the overall suspension performance of the vehicle. So I definitely recommend uh, looking into that as an option at least, but again, with the Stealth package, you get these 22 inch black with the machine ring wheels. And these wheels are wrapped in 28545 General Grabber HTS 60 tires. And I will give you a view of the tread pattern on these tires here really quick. Here's another view of the wheels. I really like the way that these wheels look. I'm just a fan of black wheels and the 22s really set this vehicle off nicely. Coming up as standard with the limited, you get rain sensing wipers and now working my way into the side view mirrors. You get body color mirror caps with integrated turn signals. And as standard, these side view mirrors are heated, power folding, the driver side mirror is auto dimming. You also get memory settings. So not only is it going to memorize your driver seat settings, it is also going to memorize your side view mirror settings as well, which I'll show you when we get into the interior. You also have your blind spot monitoring on the upper left hand side of your driver side mirror and on the upper right hand side of your passenger side mirror over there. And then a couple other things also as standard, you get a puddle light. And again, with the stealth package, you get a 360 degree view camera system. So you get these cameras on the bottoms of your side view mirrors. Again, they do work with your 360 degree view camera system. I did want to point something out up here. That is where you will find your body color shark fin antenna. You can see it is at the center of the roof line here at the front end located about right there. Now I do want to give you a little side profile shot of this thing. That is what she looks like here on the side. Again, with the stealth package, you do get these black roof rails up top here. They're more of like a satin black. That's a closer look at that. Then you get this, uh, you know, satin chrome window trim piece at the bottom. I would have liked to see this be blacked out, especially with the stealth package, but you may be able to tell it is not. Also with that stealth package, you get body color door handles with keyless access. Side note, Keyless access does come standard. However, if you didn't get the stealth package, I do believe you get like chrome door handles. And then all the way at the bottom, um, the limited high does come with power retractable running boards, but with the limited stealth, you get these gloss black power running boards. So you can see this piece here on your running board is gloss black and just gives it uh, a nicer appearance. And it matches all of the other gloss black pieces and accents and wheels uh, that again, you get with the stealth package. But now, I'm gonna give you a rear three quarter shot of this vehicle here. That is what she looks like from back here. You get a capless filler neck when you open up your fuel door. That is what it looks like down in there. Coming up top here, you get a body color roof spoiler. You also get your integrated LED third brake light up top there. You get a rear window defroster. You have your rear wiper back here. One thing that is kind of interesting about this vehicle is that this upper glass piece does open up. All you gotta do is come down to here uh, and I gotta find where you open that up. I do believe it's this button right here. So if you press this button, I guess I don't have my key fob or the key fob in my pocket. I thought I did, but if I come into here and I grab the key fob, now when I come back around and I press that button, the upper glass piece will open up. And that is what that looks like right there. So you can have your dog stick their head out the window, maybe stick some two by fours out there. If you do a Home Depot run, Moving on from there, you get LED taillights back here. Um, you also do get a power lift gate as standard. Here's a like shot from the total back end. And again, with the stealth package, I'm just gonna highlight what you get with the stealth package back here real quick. Basically, you get black badging with your black Ford logo and your black Expedition lettering and also your black limited lettering on the lower left-hand side of your lift gate. You also get a black tailgate applique, which is what this piece is right here in gloss black. Uh, and then last but not least, you also get a black lower bumper, which is basically what this piece is right here. And again, all of that stuff comes a part of the stealth package, but back into just the limited, you do get a power lift gate as standard. All you have to do is have your key fob in your pocket, press that pad right there, and the power lift gate will open up. That is the speed in which the power lift gate opens up. And this is about how much um, room you have behind the third row seats. When the third row seats are up, I'd say that's about, you know, two and a half to three feet of storage space with the third row seats up. Now you can power fold down and up these third row seats. All you have to do is press these two buttons here and then the third row seats will begin to drop. I guess I accidentally clicked um, 
the second row. So if I press this button, so these are the two third row uh, buttons right there. You can see the third row seats will drop. I guess I didn't uh, drop the headrests. So basically, if I click right here, now the headrests are dropped. If I click that button again, the third row seats will fold back down. Uh, they are, you know, rather slow. I guess I'm gonna drop the second row seat too because it's not letting the third row seat drop. So basically, you can drop all of your seats from back here, second on this side, third on this side, and then you can power fold up your third row seats by the push of that button, but you cannot power fold down your second row seats from the button back here. And then if you wanted to, if you lifted this up, you got your jack, um, and then I do believe maybe you have a spare tire under here. So that is where you'll find your spare tire. I'm gonna fold this seat back up. Uh, and then that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in the trunk area. I believe if you fold these things down, you get grocery bag holders on each side. And then if I click this button over here, the power lift gate will drop. And there are a couple more things I do wanna cover while we are here at the back end. So come down just a little bit. As standard, again, you get four parking sensors. However, this vehicle has been optioned with the $995 heavy duty trailer tow package. And with that package, you get a 373 non-limited slip differential. You get a two-speed transfer case. That package makes this vehicle neutral tow capable. Uh, you also get a trailer brake controller on the interior, pro trailer backup assist, and everything else you can read on screen. Last but not least, this vehicle has also been optioned with the $1,500 control track with the 373E limited slip differential. So now with the $1,500 control track, uh, you do get a 373 electronic locking or limited slip differential. So basically you can lock the rear differential. You can do burnouts, uh, but really it is better for towing and better for traction and stuff like that here at the back. Last but not least, I know I said that before, but the max tow capacity as this particular vehicle is spec is 9,200 pounds. If you spec this with two wheel drive, the max tow capacity would be 9,300 pounds. But really that kind of about does it for the exterior of this 2024 Expedition Limited Stealth. Let me know your opinions on the Expedition Limited Stealth in the comments down below. Are you guys a fan of the blacked out elements or do you prefer the chrome? Let me know in the comments down below. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into performance. Popping open that hood reveals that 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 that makes 400 horsepower and 480 pound-feet of torque. It is mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission for a 0 to 60 time in 5.6 seconds. And if you were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 16 miles per gallon in the city, 22 miles per gallon on the highway for 18 miles per gallon combined with four-wheel drive. And if this is not enough power for you, they do have the limited stealth performance, which gives you over 500 pound-feet of torque and a little bit more horsepower as well. Uh, but personally for me, I think this is plenty powerful. It feels very, very quick. Uh, but again, if you want just a little bit more power, they got something for you. But if you're enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot get there without your support. I did want to take a second to thank each and every one of my current subscribers, commenters, or anybody who watches my channel for helping me hit 20,000 subscribers. I just hit that this morning. So I wanted to extend a huge thank you to each and every one of you. I really, truly do appreciate all of you uh, from the bottom of my heart I truly do appreciate it but anyways with that stuff said let's move into the interior moving on into the interior like I mentioned earlier in the video you do get keyless access so all you have to do is have your key fob in your pocket walk up to the vehicle put your hand behind the door handle and the vehicle will unlock you can also lock the vehicle by running your finger across those four hash marks right there and now the vehicle is locked you can also unlock and or lock the vehicle by typing your key code in right here you type your key code in that will unlock the vehicle and you can also lock the vehicle by pressing the 7, 8 and the 9, 0 buttons simultaneously. Now the vehicle is locked again. And now I wanna walk you through a couple of the functions on the key fob starting from the top. You have your unlock function, your lock function, your remote start function, your power lift gate function and your panic function at the bottom. If you wanted to remote start the vehicle, you have to lock it and then press this button twice and the vehicle will fire up. I really do like that little rumble that you get uh, out the tailpipe of the three and a half liter EcoBoost V6. It sounds surprisingly good for a twin turbo V6. But now taking a look at the interior of the Limited Stealth, this is called the Black Onyx Leather Interior. And with the Stealth package, you do get red accent colored stitching throughout. 
So basically starting with the driver's side door panel up here at the top, you get some leather wrapping, you get some red accent colored stitching. This is actually nicely padded and I'll show you why that's important here in a second because you can rest your elbow here and steer uh, on the left hand side of the steering wheel. Then this right here is basically a defroster for your front windows. That side gets the same thing. Then you have your three memory seat adjustment settings, your unlock and your lock functions, your power side view mirror controls right here. Pressing on that button is going to restrict your passenger window privileges. Pressing on this button right here is going to power fold in or out your side view mirrors. Again, that button right there. Automatic up and down windows at all four corners. That is to open up the door. You get a nicely padded armrest. Come down here, tons of miscellaneous storage space as well as two cup holders. And then uh, as standard with this vehicle, you get a 12 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system and that is your speaker right there. Now, taking a look at the driver and the front passenger seat, you do get a 10-way power adjustable front driver seat and an eight-way power adjustable front passenger seat. Here are the seat controls for your driver seat. You get two-way lumbar, as you may be able to tell, and these seats are very, very comfortable. They are also heated and ventilated, both with three levels of adjustability, perforation down the center of the seat, and tons of red accent colored stitching. But now, let's step into the interior and see what the interior on the Expedition Limited Stealth has to offer so let's start her up she's already on but uh, now you get access into the gauge cluster and this screen over here I'm gonna get into that stuff um, here in a minute I'm also gonna turn my ventilated seat off because it's going to mess with the audio of the video so coming over to here if I press this button basically that button right there is going to powerful down uh, or those uh, uh, all right. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I can't talk right now, but basically if I press this button right here, that is going to put those headrests down just like that. That is what that does, and then that is to open and or close your power lift gate. Here are your headlight controls, that's off, parking lights on, headlights automatic, headlights always on, and that is to turn your fog lights on or off. I like to leave it in the automatic position. And then these buttons here are to brighten and or dim your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons. This is your electronic parking brake. And then this rocker switch right here is basically to bring either the pedals towards you or you can push the pedals away from you. So if I push this right here, the pedals are coming towards me here. I'll get a better view of what that looks like. Pedals are coming towards me. Then if I push this, you can see the pedals are starting to move away from me. So that's a nice feature and just makes you uh, have a little bit more adjustability to make yourself very, very comfortable here on the interior. Coming over to here, you get a power tilting and telescoping steering wheel. So if I push this button right here, the steering wheel will come out. That's pushing the steering wheel back in. That's pushing the steering wheel down. And then that is pushing the steering wheel back up. Coming up top to here, let's take a listen to our turn signal. That is what the turn signal sounds like on this vehicle. Not only is this your turn signal control stock, this is also your windshield wiper control stock as well. And that is what that looks like there. Zooming back out, you do get a leather wrapped steering wheel with some red accent colored stitching on the inside of the steering wheel. This steering wheel is also heated by the way, and your heated steering wheel control button is right down there. You do get one level of adjustability with that steering wheel. Um, and then at the center of your steering wheel, you have your horn, Take let's take a listen. That is what the horn sounds like on this vehicle. Now on this side of the steering wheel, you have your uh, volume controls, and then that is to speak to the vehicle. And then um, with the stealth package, excuse me, uh, you do get adaptive cruise control with stop and go. So here are your adaptive cruise control, your lane keep assist, and all of your driver assistance features are up top there. Now coming to this side of the steering wheel, this is to pick up and or hang up on a phone call. That is to go back on a track, that is to go forward on a track, and then all of these controls right here are to control your 12 inch digital gauge cluster located up top here. I'm gonna move the steering wheel down just a little bit. Um, so now I guess we can go throughout the gauge cluster, and basically I'm just gonna start with the screen that it is on right now. So on the left, you have your tachometer. That is your speedometer readout right there. That is basically your lane keeping stuff. This is your odometer down here. That's letting me know that I am unbuckled. That's your speed limit sign. That is letting me know that the auto stop start system is off. That's the um, uh, compass right there. Lane keep assist stuff. That's the music that's playing. That is the ambient exterior temperature. You get your transmission status stuff. That's letting me know that the emergency brake is on. Uh, this is like fuel economy stuff. You can change what's here. And then up top here, you have your coolant temperature gauge. 
you have your oil temperature, then this is like your turbo PSI, and then all the way over here is your fuel gauge as well as your fuel range. Now, to navigate throughout this screen, uh, you can click down, and it's gonna bring you in between a couple different things. So basically, you can either have your driver assistance stuff, your fuel economy stuff, your trip one stuff, and if you wanted to X out of that and go to somewhere else, you click this menu button, and that brings you into your main menu. So then you can see like your vehicle information. So you can see your tire pressure stuff, uh, your off-road stuff, so we can go into tire pressure stuff, off-road stuff, power distribution, distribution, engine information, seatbelt stuff, and your driver assistance stuff. Back into this screen over here, you can also go in between your different towing stuff. You can see your trailer information, some trailer light status stuff, towing status, and your driver assistance stuff. Clicking this menu button again, bringing me back into this screen. You can also uh, see your navigation stuff. You can go into all of those different things there. You can go into your phone stuff. You can go into all of these different things. Um, you can do your audio stuff which basically like all your XM, AM, FM, so on and so forth, your Bluetooth audio. Then you can go in between your different settings. You can configure your gauges. You can go into your left selectable gauge, go between those different things, your right selectable gauge, go in between those different things, uh, and so on and so forth. You can also go into neutral toe, which you can click here. Um, and basically you gotta go throughout those different settings. So basically, if you have an RV, you can flat tow this vehicle behind your RV, no problem. It's not gonna mess anything up. Um, but yeah, that's kind of about it for your digital gauge cluster. Over here on your A pillar for the driver, you get an Opu panel. Coming over to here, you get your Bang & Olufsen speaker. Then you get a little bit of storage space up top here as well. That's your push button, start button. When that is illuminated in green, that means that the vehicle is on. Now, coming over to here, this vehicle has been optioned with the $795, 15 and a half inch LCD screen. Um, so this does not come standard with this vehicle. This does come at an option uh, and you do get this big screen uh, as that option. So basically up top here, you have your different shortcut buttons. You have this button right here is gonna bring you in between your different controls. Then you have your home button. Then if you press that camera button, obviously it's gonna pop up your 360 degree view camera system. Again, the 360 cam comes a part of the stealth package. Then you can X out of that. You can go uh, and see your time. You can see that my phone battery is being charged at the moment. This is kind of like your home screen, or excuse me, this is your app screen. You can see all of the different things you can see uh, up top there. Wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto do come with this system. This is a Sync 4 system. It works very, very well in my personal opinion. I have seen some people complain about it. Uh, I, personally for me, I've never had any issues with uh, the Sync 4 system. but. I'm gonna click back into that home button. You can go into your entertainment stuff, which is all of these different things here. Um, I did wanna show you the controls because this is a very easy system to use. So you can go into between your different driver assistance stuff by clicking the driver assistance shortcut. It's gonna pop up all of your different driver assistance features. You can turn them off. You can set them to how you want them to be. You can go into adaptive cruise control. You can have normal cruise control. You can turn speed sign recognition on if you wanted to. You can turn that off. Then you can go between your different vehicle settings, lighting, wipers, all of these different things here um, for your settings down in there. So just a very, very easy system to use. You can go between your different general settings here, sound settings uh, for your uh, Bang & Olufsen sound system, your phone stuff. Uh, it's just a very, again, very easy system to use and I personally appreciate stuff like that. Then you have a couple different shortcuts down here like your audio to XM, your phone stuff and your navigation stuff. And then down here is basically your climate control stuff. Uh, this does come standard with a tri-zone climate control system. You can see right now, this is my volume control knob. However, if you click this fan button right here, now this is my fan speed control knob. You can see fan is coming on, fan is going back off. And then if I go over to here and I want to adjust the temperatures, now this is my temperature control knob. So very, very kind of funny thing um, that you can do with this screen. I apologize, I'm gonna turn that back off. But uh, that is what that does. And then if you want the climate control stuff to take the entire screen, wait, I'll show you that here in a second. I did wanna show you one more thing. Uh, again, you get heated and ventilated seats. So if I click this button, you have your heated and your ventilated seat functions down here for your driver and your front passenger as well over there. Uh, this is your heated steering wheel button. Again, one level of adjustability. And if you wanted again to bring the climate throughout this entire screen, you'd click right there. And now this entire screen is your climate control screen for your front. If I click over here, this is the climate control screen for the rear passengers. You can unlock it, you can lock it from up here. Um, and then that's kind of about it uh, for the climate control stuff. Click that button and then the climate control system comes down. And uh, that's really about it for this screen. I don't wanna spend too much time on this screen, uh, but I could, and if you click right there, that's going to turn the audio off or on. Uh, and then if you click this entire button, that's going to bring you into your um, this screen here. 
So that's about it for that screen. Coming down just a little bit more, um, you get your um, basically auto stop start button, your hazard button, traction control on or off button, and then that is your max front defroster button. Again, this vehicle has been optioned with the heavy duty trailer tow package. And with the heavy duty trailer tow package, you do get the pro trailer backup assist. So basically you twist this to this side or this side uh, when you backing up a trailer and the vehicle will basically turn that direction and it'll steer the steering wheel for you with this knob up top here. And then this is your integrated trailer brake controller, also a part of the heavy duty trailer tow package. Moving on from there, coming down as standard with this vehicle, you get a wireless charging pad. My phone is in the wireless charging pad. That is an iPhone 14 Pro Max, one of the bigger phones on the market, and you can see it fits in the wireless charging pad, no problem. And then to the left of the wireless charging pad, you get a USB-C port and a USB-A port, and then you get a little bit of miscellaneous storage base down there as well. You get a rotary dial gear shifter, twisting to the right puts you into drive. If you wanted to go into manual mode, you press that M button right there while you are in drive, and now you are in manual mode twist all the way back now we are back in park again this vehicle has been optioned with the $1,500 control track with the 373 electronic limited slip differential so if you click that that is going to lock your rear axle or your rear differential uh, these buttons here are to uh, upshift and or downshift with the transmission and then this is your four-wheel drive stuff you get four-wheel drive low four-wheel drive high with the heavy duty trailer tow package you also get four-wheel drive automatic right there uh, and then if you twist between here that's going to bring you in between your different drive modes so i'm going to start over here you got your tow haul mode you have your sport mode you have your eco mode you have your normal mode, you also have your slippery mode, your sand mode, and your mud slash ruts mode. So you have seven different drive modes to choose from with this vehicle. Uh, right now we're going back into <clears throat> uh, normal mode. And then this is your hill descent control button here, and then this is to turn your parking sensors on or off. Coming over to here, you get two uh, cup holders. And then this center console right here also comes a part of the stealth package. And this is called your sport center console because you get like that forged carbon fiber type of trim. Uh, it's not actually forged carbon fiber. Then you get a storage base over here. You get some more storage base on this side down in there as well. You get a lockable center console. If you come over to here, stick your key in there and that will lock. Nicely padded center console, by the way. Opening this up, you get this divider. You can set some business cards or some coins or your phone if you wanted to. But taking that out, there is a ton of storage space down in here. Um, you also get a 12 volt power outlet over there. You get a light down in here as well. But yeah, just tons and tons of storage space uh, down in there. And then you also get a couple pen holders. You get a pen holder for the passenger. You also get a pen holder over here for the driver. So if you own a business uh, and you want a vehicle to write off, that's also a family vehicle that you can also work out of well as you may be able to tell this is pretty good for your business cards you can also set your pens and stuff in there uh, and then obviously you can tell it's a good family vehicle as well but coming over to here you get an upper glove box you can fit i would say maybe eight to ten sausage mcmuffins up top there then you get a lockable lower glove box and opening up the lower glove box you get a little bit of storage space down in there we got some stuff over here that's blocking me uh, but decent amount of storage space in the glove box you can fit what you need to in there opening that up 12 volt power outlet uh, and then this side looks pretty much the exact same as what you get on the driver's side opu panel over there on the a pillar for the passenger auto dimming rear view mirror that lets you know if your passenger airbag is on or off and up top here you basically have all of your light controls light control light control this is to turn on all the interior dome lights that is whether you want the lights to turn on or not when you open up the doors uh, and then these controls here and then these two controls here are all for your panoramic sunroof. Again, this panoramic sunroof does come standard with the Stealth. Um, so that will go all the way back. It's going to stop here. Click that button one more time and then it will go all the way back. This does slide and then this also does tilt. So if you wanted to tilt it, you'd press that button right there. You can see now it's just tilted. If I press uh, that button again, or not that button, I'm gonna close it and then open it up all the way, it will slide back and I'll show you what it looks like um, when it slid back here in a second. That is as far as it goes. If I hit it one more time, will it go further? It will. So now it is all the way back, but it doesn't normally go all the way back. You gotta click it a second time for it to open up all the way. Uh, and then that's about it for the sunroof thing. Then you have a sunglass holder right here. Coming over to here, you get your universal garage door opener. If you own a house with three different garage bays, you can open up those garage bays individually. You get a vanity mirror with two vanity lights, and then this vanity or this visor, excuse me, slides forwards and backwards, dependent on where the sun is shining. Uh, I'm gonna close the uh, shade there. 
Uh, but basically, that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in the front seat. So a couple things I wanted to get uh, mentioned that you get with the Stealth uh, is that in here, uh, you get the red accent colored stitching, you get the floor mats with the logo, you get the sport center console, you get adaptive cruise control with stop and go, you get evasive steer assist, you get pre-collision assist with automatic emergency braking as well as a couple other things. Um, a couple other things that you get as standard, you get a 12 speaker Bang & Olufsen uh, sound system, you get a 12 inch digital gauge cluster, you get that pano roof, heated and ventilated front seats, the heated steering wheel, the wireless charging pad, uh, ambient interior lighting, the tri-zone climate control system, the list goes on. Uh, now I'm gonna throw the entire window sticker on screen. You guys can take a look at everything that you get as standard with this vehicle. You can take a look at the couple options this vehicle has that I already went over. But basically, I'm just going to highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2024 Expedition Limited Stealth is spec'd is $82,760. That is a ton of money. Uh, but this is also a very nice vehicle at the same time. It's plenty powerful, plenty comfortable. And as you may be able to tell, it can tow a really big boat. It can tow your entire family around. Um, so, you know, that's just what these vehicles cost nowadays. It is what it is. This is what the rear door panel looks like. Very similar to what you would find at the front. Again, automatic up and down windows here at the back. Let's see how far the windows go down. They go all the way down. Again, automatic up as well cup holder you get a speaker there a speaker there some phone storage and some more storage space down there as well as a cup holder this is what your second row seats look like you do get a center fold down armrest here uh, in the middle uh, and then stepping into these second row seats the second row seats are heated with two levels of adjustability you get an opu panel over here uh, on your b pillar you get an HVAC vent up top here. You get your dome light up top here, a spot you can set your dry cleaning and an Opu panel, another. So you get two Opu panels back here, same stuff on that side as well. Seat back pocket behind the driver and the front passenger seat. You get two cup holders. Uh, you get two USB-C ports. These are new for 2024. They used to be USB-A's. And then coming over to here, you get a 110 volt household power outlet. You get your tri-zone climate control system stuff back here. That's what that looks like. Again, like I mentioned, you get heated second row seats with two levels of adjustability. Coming down just a little bit more, you get a 12 volt power outlet, a little bit of storage space down in there as well. Um, and then sitting behind myself, you can see I have plenty of leg and knee room. Here's another view of my leg and knee room. I accidentally activated the, the front uh, climate control system. Um, but moving on from there, you get a nice armrest right here, nicely padded. Um, yeah, tons of room here. And then I can also recline these seats if I wanted to as well. Tons of reclinability. Now I am very, very comfortable here in these seats, but I do want to uh, bring these seats back up. Apologize if uh, the camera views are all messed up, but now I wanna show you what we got going on here in these third row seats. So back here in the third row, you get a USB-A port. Um, I can recline these seats by pushing on this button. Now the seat is reclining. Now, if I press that other button, the seat is going to come back towards me. It's very, very cool. You can recline and unrecline them. Same thing on that side right there as well. This side, you get a USB-A port and a 12 volt power outlet down there. Tons of storage space, a cup holder, and uh, same on this side, tons of storage space, but no 12 volt outlet. You get two cup holders on this side. You get one cup holder on that side. Um, now, sitting behind myself, I still have plenty of knee and leg room. Here's another view of that. And then when it comes to headroom, still a ton of headroom back here. Then you get an HVAC vent here, an HVAC vent over there. You get your dome lights up top here, a little uh, grocery, or uh, excuse me, a dry clean thing right there. Another dry clean thing on that side. And that kind of about concludes the interior on this vehicle. So, you know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior of this vehicle. So I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I will see you guys in the driver's seat all right and now on to the driving portion of the video where i always start my videos here we go over these speed bumps at five miles an hour and then i rate them on a scale of one to ten again that's about five right there very well over the first speed bump not surprised fords uh usually ride very well over those speed bumps very torquey engine here um let's go five again there we go this thing is going to get an eight and a half on a scale of one to 10. Nothing is ever 10, by the way. Um, 10 perfection doesn't exist in this world, but this thing rode very well over those speed bumps. Uh, and then with that continuously uh, controlled dampened suspension, man, this thing handles very well, way better uh, than other expeditions without 
this system because sometimes you know uh, like I said with boards it seems like they prioritize comfort rather than you know handling and stuff like that um, so with that continuously dampened suspension um, this thing handles very very well goes over speed bumps very very well just takes bumps well nice little acceleration that was probably maybe 40 percent throttle and this thing is very very quick rides very very well like i said with that suspension no joke like i'm not bsing when i said um that i could feel the suspension when i first got into it because i went over a bump and i was like okay well that bump should have jarred me around a little bit more um and as soon as i came to the spot where i filmed I checked the window sticker and I was like, ah, that makes sense. I knew that it had some sort of suspension, uh, magnetic ride control, like that's what they call it in GMs. Uh, but it had like the continuously controlled dampened suspension. And I was like, okay, well that definitely makes sense because I could definitely tell, you know, right off the bat pretty much after uh, driving it around, I was like, okay, well now that makes perfect sense. So I think that suspension upgrade is definitely worth it. Uh, it just makes this vehicle be able to do everything well. You know, it can handle well, it can go over bumps well um it's just it, it does make a big difference it is an option that you could skip um but if you do enjoy driving and you do occasionally enjoy to drive spiritedly um and you just enjoy a nice suspension on a vehicle i know it's 1500 bucks i know that's a lot of money but when you're spending you know this kind of money on a vehicle in my opinion it's worth the upgrade um so that's my uh two cents on that Power wise, this thing has plenty of power. I really don't think you need the stealth performance, but for me, I love power, so might as well get the stealth performance, but really you don't need it. Here's a nice little normal acceleration. Basically back to what I was saying about the stealth performance. If you just have, you know, just money that you just wanna spend, um, and money is not really an issue when it comes to buying a vehicle like this, then definitely get the stealth performance. You know, why not? Why not get a little bit of extra power? Um, extra power never hurt anybody. Uh, and plus it probably make it a little bit more fun to drive. But really, uh, if you are kind of on a budget um, and you don't really want to spend any more money than already this one here, then I don't think that you need the stealth performance. But if you like power and you have the money, definitely get the stealth performance. It is a noticeable jump in power. You can feel the power difference. Uh, but again, for the majority of you out there, this is going to be plenty powerful enough, especially for a three row SUV. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want a little bit more here for take a listen to what this sounds like. I wanted to show you what it sounded like going over those bridge joints at about 50 and then also just to hear the wind noise and the road noise at about 60 on a breezier day. Uh, very well insulated from the outside world. It goes over bumps very, very well. Like I said, like going over those bridge joints, you can barely even feel it. Um, but what was I saying? Oh yeah, stealth performance. If you want a little bit of extra power, get the stealth performance. I personally like extra power. And if I had the extra money, I'd get the stealth performance, but uh, you don't really need it. You really don't need it. This thing's plenty powerful enough. It's got plenty of torque. Um, like if, let's say, you know, you're on the highway, you're going at about 50 miles an hour, 48 miles an hour, and you wanted to pass somebody, you floor it. There's the passing power. You can see it's got plenty of it. Um, and if you want it to be a little sharper uh, on the little acceleration, you can flip over to drive modes. You can put yourself into sport. Uh, it does put you into, I believe, four wheel drive automatic. Um, so let's say, you know, I floor it. It makes it sound really good. So it makes it sound better gives you a little bit more throttle response, uh, holds the gears and stuff. Man, this thing actually sounds really, really good in sport mode. I'm sure there's pumped in audio there. That guy in that Lexus is ripping. Um, but yeah, I mean, this thing has plenty of get up and go. You do not need any more power than this has, but if you want a little bit more oomph, that's where the stealth performance package comes in and uh, really, I like more power, so I might get that if I had the money. Don't have the money to buy either one of these vehicles, but if I did, it would be the stealth performance. You can see I floored it a couple of times and now it's asking for fuel. So it will suck down some fuel, uh, you know, if you start getting hard on the throttle and stuff like that. Let's see the brakes. 
Brakes are pretty good. Um, you can feel the weight of it when you're coming, you know, from a stop. Now, see how it handles around this turn here. Give it like 50% throttle. Plenty of power. You can see that uh, this engine is more tuned kind of towards, you know, the mid-range-ish, it seems like, from what I can tell, because uh, it accelerates very well in the mid-range power level or power in the mid-range RPMs is what the word I was looking for. So great power from this. I do uh, have a couple complaints. And the only complaints that I really have uh, come with this screen down here. So with uh, the volume control knob and the fan speed control knob, as well as the temperature control knob, you can't adjust the volume and the uh, fan speed at the same time because they're both in Lamborghini Urus in yellow over there. Um, sorry, that was a squirrel moment, but I do want to show you. Look at the Lamborghini Urus. Um, back to what I was saying, you can't adjust the volume and the fan speed at the same time, so that's kind of annoying. Um, and then also another complaint is that all your uh, climate control stuff is controlled throughout the screen, which... Uh, it seems like all manufacturers are moving towards that. Personally, for me, give me physical climate control buttons. That's all I ask for. Makes a big difference when controlling that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, those are my only complaints. Other than that, the climate control stuff is pretty easy to use because you have it on the screen at all times. So it's really not that big of a deal compared to some other vehicles that I have driven. Um, but that is, you know, a complaint that I do have. But uh, other than that, man, this thing cruises very, very well. It's got plenty of get up and go. Um, it's got really good looks to it as well. And uh, it's just very quiet here on the interior. Uh, I love everything that you get with this vehicle. It's just, it is a pricey vehicle, but um, yeah, acceleration wise, plenty of power. Plenty of comfort here. The seats are very, very comfortable. Really, um, you know, if you want to get a vehicle as comfortable as this, as powerful as this, and, uh, you know, with all the features that this has, um, you know, you're really, you're going to have to spend a lot of money because, you know, the Yukons and the Tahos are not quite as comfortable as this seat wise. You really got to step up to an Escalade if you want the level of comfort seat wise that this gives you uh, in like a Tahoe or in a Yukon. They just don't quite have it, whereas the Escalade does have it. But other than that, that's kind of about it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. Like I said, I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot get there without your support. I am a fifth of the way there as of today. Thank you all so much for 20,000 subscribers. I know in the world of YouTube, that's really not all that many, uh, but I truly do appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, I'm on my way to 100 and uh, you know, it's gonna be a great time once I hit that. It feels great to hit 20K. So again, thank you all so much. But again, that's it for today's video. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.